Hi, everyone. Day 20 of Napo Rimo. Still going strong. Um, just want to say real quick, is it just me or is being a human <laughs> really exhausting sometimes? Um, anyway, wow, doing a challenge like this, if you're following along in real time, always reminds me what kind of energy and persistence and dedication is necessary when choosing to push yourself to do like a daily poem challenge of this sort. Um, so if you're feeling a little worn out, if you're feeling a little tired or lethargic or like your brain has sort of depleted, that's okay. That's normal. Um, one thing I learned from Julia Cameron's The Artist Way is this concept of filling the well. And that means when you're an artist or a creative person, you, you might need to, um, you know, thinking about ebbing and flowing with your creative energies, sometimes you're producing and you're pushing energy out like writing on the page. That takes energy. Um, and then when your energy is depleted, uh, you know, we need to fill the well back up, whether that means resting and sleeping, eating good food, getting a dose of nature, getting a dose of socializing with good friends, um, or just vegging out sometimes and letting your brain sort of be a lump of potato, you know, on the couch. Like, I just want to make a quick note on day 20 of this challenge that it is totally okay to be wherever you're at and in, and whatever your choice is is all good to to you um for me i'm showing up here again and giving you a prompt because i do think this type of challenge in addition to being good for our artist selves can be beneficial to our holistic selves in the sense that as a creative person, I tend to have a lot of ups and downs in my mood and my emotion in my motivation, you know. So for me, having the discipline to do something persistently, consistently, every day, no matter what, no matter how I'm feeling, I mean, of course, if I were like on my you know, deathbed right now, like maybe I would give myself a break, right? But um, barring any huge emergencies, catastrophes, or, you know, illnesses, um, if I am generally sound in mind and body, even if I'm a little under the weather emotionally, spiritually, or physically, um, showing up when I say I'm going to show up is personally important to me. And so if you are also showing up to yourself, whether that is today on day 20, um, or whether that is in another realm of your life, showing up to work, showing up to your family, showing up to your, you know, self-care practices when you don't feel like it, I just want to give you a gold star, okay? Like in kindergarten, in first grade, as adults, we do, and as, as artists, we really need to fill ourselves up and give ourselves lots of pats on the back, acknowledgement, um, generous encouragement to ourselves. And that is a big part of keeping us going. Even if it takes you a little longer to get to the page, or even if you write a little bit shorter of a poem, if you just show up and do it, <laughs> and remember it doesn't have to be perfect, and remember that sometimes doing it is more important than doing it well, uh, then with that, let's just get going and take this prompt however you would like. So I'm going to read a poem by Jericho Brown, and this one is called Four Day in the Morning. So far, every time I've read it to myself, I, I weep slightly. Um, let's see if I can get through it, okay? So Four Day in the Morning. My mother grew morning glories that spilled onto the walkway toward her porch because she was a woman with land who showed as much by giving a color. 
She told me I could have whatever I worked for. That means she was an American, but she'd say it was because she believed in God. I am ashamed of America and confounded by God. I thank God for my citizenship in spite of the timer set on my life to write these words. I love my mother. I love black women who plant flowers as sheepish as their sons. By the time she blooms, unfurl themselves for a few hours of light, the women who tend them are already at work. Blue, I'll never know who started the lie that we are lazy. But I'd love to wake that bastard up at four day in the morning, toss him in a truck and drive him under God past every bus stop in America to see all those black folk waiting to go work for whatever they want. A house, a boy to keep the lawn cut, some color in the yard. My God, we leave things green. Oh my God, I like still, every time I encounter that poem, it just shakes me to my core and my heart. Um, I'm just gonna go with it and go into the prompt. Um, oops, so whatever, we are not needing to be perfect here. In fact, let me get my um, writing mantra. <laughs> Okay, so showing up to ourselves here on the page today, if you are on day 20, or if you're joining at any time, you know, welcome. Um, just reminding ourselves, I am here and present with my experiences. I am grounded and open. I have unlimited access to the infinite flow of creativity always around me. Whatever happens on these pages is what's meant to happen. I'm not judging myself on my writing. I'm just writing. I have everything I need to begin already inside of me. I'm settling in and I'm ready to write. All right, everyone. So let's just start with something real simple, real easy. Here are a couple of, or here are four stems, a few stems just taken straight from Draco Brown's poem um, for you to fill in however you feel like. So you can see to just fill in the blanks. My mother with a verb because blank. She told me blank. She believed in blank. I am ashamed of blank. I'm thankful for. I love. I'll never know. So these are just um, taken from the poem as inspiration just to get some words on the page, fill them in, and when you're done, come back for the next step. Okay, so for this free write, if you wanna put a few minutes, five minutes on the clock, or just go till you feel done, I'm interested in prompting you to free write the idea, anything to any of these questions, you know, what have you planted in your life? That doesn't mean necessarily, uh, literally, you know, but what have you invested in in your life? What did your parents invest in? How'd that turn out? Thinking about lineage, you know, what have you inherited from your parents? What is a lie that you've been told about yourself? And how do you unravel it? what are you creating as you go forward? So I feel like that's kind of a lot, but hopefully at least one of these questions will spark something for you. And again, just, just let yourself move the pen across the page and um, meet you back here for the next step. Okay, here we go. So thinking about the poem we saw, there's so much color in it, right? There's blues, there's greens, there's the flowers. Um, so make a list of three colors. We're gonna keep it simple. I mean, you can do more if you want, but the idea is to make three primary colors or what, you know, three general colors you already know. And then for each one of them, Google it. And then look at the different shades of those of that color. So you can click on images most of the time and it will often show you like a like a color palette. 
So for example, if you did blue, you know, they might show you like periwinkle, you know, robin's egg blue. Um, so looking at the different shades, write down, you know, some names of colors that interest you. If you want to just do three for each one, that would be cool or whatever. And then also make a list of three plants that you know. So that could be shrubs, trees, flowers, herbs, whatever um, that just come to mind. And then for each one of those, Google each one and write down three facts about each plant that you learn or highlight or whatnot. Um, two minutes was an accident. This is probably gonna take you more than two minutes. So <laughs> Just do that for um, until you feel done or you have just at least a few things on your, on your page and then come back for the final step. All right, putting it all together, thinking about your lineage. See if this is your challenge, if you like to accept it or do whatever you want. You know, this, I'll be honest, this prompt, I'm not really sure how, you know, you might put it all together, but that's where poetic, poetic logic comes in. But write a poem considering your lineage. So thinking about family lineage, social lineage, maybe ethnic or cultural lineage, or maybe just your personal or spiritual lineage, maybe biological, human, whatever you kind of feel like, what does lineage mean to you? Where do you come from? And these are just some ideas. Consider how things grow and evolve and thinking about how lies grow and evolve. How do, so how the language is a human construct. So how does language grow and evolve uh, about truth? How do, but then going back to the natural world, how do plants, you know, grow and die? How do families grow or die? You know, so thinking about your brainstormed language from your colors, your plant facts and the stems from step one. Um, oops, see if you can make your, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I don't know why I have to go through this whole thing again, um, but see if you can make your uh, poem colorful. That's the main thing I wanted to say. I feel like that should have been its own little bullet point, but see if you can make the poem colorful. That was one of the things that really struck me about Brown's poem is how colorful it was, even while approaching some very deep emotional, social issues. So go ahead and have fun writing. Whatever you write today is what you're meant to write. So um, thanks for playing. Okay, I'm gonna keep this short because I'll be honest. I'm a little bit crunched for time in my general life and work day. I will let you know this. I found this poem on a podcast called The School of Greatness. And it's a fantastic podcast um, that interviews a whole bunch of really amazing people. And I've listened to all sorts of episodes with different, you know, businessmen and activists and thought leaders and such. And so I was so stoked when a poet, <laughs> Jericho Brown, was on the show and he read this poem on the podcast, I was walking around my neighborhood, just listening to my podcast, and I just like erupted into tears hearing this poem. It just moved me so much with the, the lineage and the mother um, and the lies that are told to ourselves, you know, from, from society and the racism, you know, as a lie that is often told um, that we need to like unravel and so anyway, uh, <laughs> I'm going to include a link to that episode in the description if you want to listen to it. I do remember from the episode that Jericho Brown actually um, chose his own name. Uh, and I think that was very interesting. I don't want to butcher the story, but I do remember that, that detail. And that to me is interesting to think about how we do get to choose our identities and our destinies to some extent, especially thinking about lineage and where we come from, some things that are Im imposed upon us or that are natural within us, there's that. And then also our ability of agency to choose um, who we are and who we decide to become. 
in life. So I will include that link if you want to listen to that podcast episode or read more about Brown and um, his work. I'm just going to stop there and in, and just wish you um, an enjoyable rest of your day. Okay, thank you.